The popular app downloader has been removed from the Google Play Store due to a DCMA complaint. Now, if it's removed from the Amazon App Store, that means we can't get it on Fire TV sticks, Fire TVs or Fire TV cubes, which is a real problem because this is the only way at the moment that we can sideload apps onto these devices, or is it? We're gonna look in this video at a backup plan just in case Downloader does get removed from the Amazon App Store and removed from Fire TV Sticks, Fire TVs, and Fire TV Cubes. If you're watching this video as a short, then tap on the thumbnail in the bottom right-hand corner right now to see the full video. If you're already watching the full video, hang tight, more details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say, as of the 23rd of May 2023, Google have removed Downloader from the Google Play Store. This is in response to a DCMA complaint that was made to them. Now, at the moment, thankfully, it is still available on the Amazon App Store, which means it's downloadable onto Fire TV sticks, Fire TVs and Fire TV cubes. But what happens if a DCMA complaint is made to Amazon and they have to remove it from their store? You've got no way then of downloading anything. So it's a good idea to have a backup plan, get things put in place just in case that day ever comes. I mean, I'd like to think hopefully it wouldn't. I'm not scaremongering here. I'm just saying have a backup plan. And this video is going to show you how you can load software onto your Fire TV device so that in the event of it getting removed, you've got another way of still side loading apps. We're going to explore a couple of different pos possibilities. So first of all, we're going to look at the simplest way. Now, this only applies if you've still got Downloader on your device. And this is to load another app to basically allow you to download. So go into Downloader if you've still got it. If you haven't got it, don't worry. A little bit later on in the video, we're going to go through another method. So go up to the enter a URL or search term box, middle button on the remote control, and then type in there 21203. That's 21203. Press the play pause button. And hopefully after a few seconds, you should find yourself at my website and in particular the download section. We're there, let's scroll down. And what we wanna do is we want to go down to TV Bro just there. Put your little red circle anywhere over the TV Bro icon, middle button, and hopefully then it should start to download. Now this is quite a big file, it is the latest version. It will take a few moments to download. And once it's downloaded, you should see a screen similar to this. Just keep pressing the down button until cancel's highlighted press the right button on the remote and get install highlighted, middle button, and it starts to install. Now, once it's installed, it will come up that it's done. So press the middle button on the remote control. There we go, app installed, done. And then we wanna delete this file. This is a huge file. It's taking up loads of space on our device. So go across to the right to highlight, delete, middle button. Go across to the left to highlight the second, delete, middle button. And then keep tapping the left-hand side of the ring on the remote until home highlighted, middle button, back button twice. And then what we want to do now is we want to press the home button on the remote control to go back to the main screen. Go across to the settings cog just over there. Go down and across to applications, middle button. Go down to manage installed applications, middle button. And go down until we find TV Bro. Now this is sorted alphabetically, so keep going down. And once we see there TV Bro web browser, middle button on the remote, and we need to go into permissions. So make sure that's highlighted, middle button. We need to make sure that storage says allow. At the moment, it says deny. So highlight storage, middle button, and there you go, it goes to allow. Otherwise, you'll find you won't be able to download anything. Back button on the remote control, and keep pressing the back button until you go back to the main screen. Then go across to the settings cog, 
and then go down to My Fire TV, middle button, go into Developer Options, middle button, go into Install Unknown Apps if you have it, middle button, then go down to TV Bro TV Web Browser. And there you should see it says Off, middle button on the remote control, and that turns it on. If you've got apps from unknown sources, go down to it, middle button on the remote control if it's switched off, and then you'll get this screen, middle button again, and there we go, it's switched on. Keep pressing the back button on the remote until you're back to the main menu, then press and hold the home button on the remote until this screen appears, go across to apps, middle button, then go down to TV Bro, middle button. And then once you see this, just say, yes, let's start using the new engine. So just press the middle button. Okay, so go across to input query text or URL, middle button on the remote control. And here you'd more or less put in what you'd put into Downloader. So if it was a web address, you'd put that in here. So if you was, for instance, going to my website, for instance, you'd put in cwtech with a k.co.uk forward slash D, then press the play pause button on the remote control. Now, what if you've got a downloader code? So what you'd do there is you'd go back into the input text or query, clear out anything that might be in it, and then type in there aftv.news forward slash, and then the downloader code. So my download loader code for my website is 21203. So I'd put in aftv.news forward slash 21203, then press the play pause button on the remote control. And again, that is going to take you to my website or whatever website the downloader code takes you to. So once it's there, let's just find something to download. So I'm going to download, say, Virus Total Mobile. So let's just move my circle over the icon for Virus Total Mobile, middle button, and here we go. It says download started file will be stored at blah, blah, blah. So all we need to do is to check on the states of the downloads is go to this downward arrow just there at the top of the screen, middle button. And there we go. It tells us it's been downloaded. So how do we install it from here? So highlight it, press and hold the middle button on the remote until this menu appears and then make sure that installs highlighted middle button. And there we go. Keep pressing the down button so the cancels highlighted, press the right button so that installs highlighted middle button. And there you go. It's now installing. So once it's installed, what we need to do is we need to go to done and then we can delete this file. Now, normally downloader would offer us the opportunity to delete it. This one doesn't come up with a pop-up box, but what we do is we press and hold the middle button on the remote control until this menu appears and then go down to delete middle button, press the back button and then press the home button on the remote to come out. And let's just check it's there. So I'm gonna press and hold the home button until this menu appears, go across to apps, middle button, go down to the bottom, and there you go, Virus Total has installed. Now, what happens if you haven't got Downloader available to you? What happens if it's already gone from the App Store? How do you get your things installed then? Well, for the next part, you're going to need a Android phone or a tablet. It is possible to do this from a PC, but unfortunately not a Mac or an Apple device. So if you've got no PC or you've got no Android phone or tablet, then your best bet is probably to go and buy a cheap Android phone or a tablet. Even a second hand one will do. Doesn't need to be the latest and greatest phone or tablet, just as long as it's got an Android system in, then you'll be absolutely fine. So what we need to do first of all is we need to make sure that ADB debugging is switched on in developer options. Now, if you haven't got developer options, press the home button. That's the picture of the house on the remote control to make sure that you're back to the home screen and then go across all the way to the right to the settings cog. Once that's highlighted, then go down to My Fire TV, then press the middle button on the remote and then you're looking for developer options. Now, if like mine, you don't see it, then all you need to do is go into about and then find the name of your device and highlight it. Like mine, mine says Fire TV Stick 4K. Yours may say something different. Just press the middle button on the remote control until you see no need, you're already a developer come up at the bottom of the screen, then stop pushing the middle button. Then press the back button on the remote and there you should see developer options just below about. 
go down to developer options, middle button, and then make sure that ADB debugging is highlighted. If it's switched off, middle button on the remote control, and that turns it on. So we then go to our phone or tablet and we go into the Play Store. So find that and then tap on search just up the top. And what we're searching for is easy fire tools. So I don't know if you can see that there. I've searched for easy fire tools, press the blue button. And then what we're looking for is we're looking for this here, easy fire tools, press the green install button, let that install. Now, the next thing we need to ensure is we need to make sure that we are connected to the same Wi-Fi network that our Fire TV stick, Fire TV or Cube is connected to. And then we can open up Easy Fire Tools. There we go, we're now open. Next thing I need to do is I need to go back and down to my Fire TV. I'm just gonna move the phone out of the way for a second. So as I say, we need to go down to My Fire TV in the bottom left hand corner, middle button, and then go into about middle button and then go down to network. And we need to take a note of the IP address. That's the second address, not mine. Don't take a note of mine, take a note of whatever is below yours. You're gonna need that in a second. Let's go back to the phone. Okay, so what we're gonna to have to do first of all is we're gonna to go to the three horizontal lines in the top left hand corner just there tap on that go down to settings tap on that and then go down to IP address just down there tap on that and we need to change that to match whatever we've got on the fire TV stick cube or TV so mine says 10.106 so I'm just going to change that to 192.168.10.106 Let's just do that. There we go. So as you can see, mine now matches the IP address on my Fire Stick. Hit OK. And then let's just come out of this. So press the back button once. And then let's go up to the two little plug sockets up there. And there you go. You should see this allow USB debugging appear. Now, when you see that, then make sure that you put a tick in always allow from this computer then go down to OK and middle button. Now you probably will find it comes up saying authorization required. The current device is not authorized to connect. An authorization request has been sent to the device. Please confirm the request and continue here after that. So tap continue and there we go. The little plugs have now gone green, which means it's connected. Now, if you do have any trouble with the uh, connection, if it basically says that the device hasn't got ADB switched on or enabled, then best thing to do is go into developer options, go into ADB debugging, turn it off, and then turn it back on again. If that doesn't work after doing that a few times and you're still getting this message, then go down to restart there and restart your device. And then again, try toggling the um, developer options, ADB debugging off and back on again. Sometimes it doesn't always connect first time. So the next thing we can do is let's just go into Chrome and let's just go to my website and I'm gonna download, downloader. So let's just go down, find downloader. There it is, tap on that and let it download. Once it's downloaded, then what we can do is we can go back into Easy Fire Tools. Make sure that we've selected Side Load there on the left. So that's under the three horizontal lines, Side Load, and then tap Custom APK File, and then tap Select File. And there we go, there's Downloader just there. So let's tap on that. And there we go, it gives us the opportunity now to install it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back, don't have to do this, but just to prove that it's installing it remotely, I'm gonna go back into the uh, this screen just here by holding down the home button on the remote, then go across to apps, middle button, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then let's tap install on our phone. And it said, should downloader be installed? Yes. And that's now transferring the app. Downloader has then appeared on the Fire TV stick. And if we go into Downloader, and then it's gonna ask us, do we want to allow Downloader access to photos, media, and files? We need to say allow to this. 
So middle button, middle button again. And then the only other thing we might need to do is we might need to go press the home button, go across to the settings cog, go down to MiFi TV, middle button, then go into developer options, middle button, go into install unknown apps, middle button, and then go down to downloader. And if it says off, we need to turn it on. If you've got apps from unknown sources on the previous menu, then just make sure that is turned on. So there we go. That shows you a way or a couple of ways of getting downloader back on your Fire TV stick cube or TV if it ever gets removed from the Amazon App Store. There's also another way, like I said to you earlier, using a PC. Now, I'm going to show you that in a separate video because this video is far too long. So look out for that other video on my YouTube channel. If it's not there today, then hopefully it'll be there in the next few days. And don't forget, whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not have a look around? I've got thousands of other videos on here covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully, whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you and maybe even save you some time and money.